Are you in a couple looking for a third? Or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field values sex positivity and encourages you to share your desires and interests directly to your profile. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today. Hey guys, welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor, Bloom Nutrition. Bloom Nutrition creates this superfood powder that makes you feel your best in the morning. If you've got bloating issues or you're a little bit hungover from the night before, it's a great way to get you back on the right track first thing in the morning. And if you go to bloomnu.com slash holly, you will get 15% off your first order. That's bloomandyou.com slash holly for 15% off your first order. So let's get to our guest. Our guest today is CJ Miles. She has an amazing rags to riches story that brought her into the 0.02% of top only fans performers. That is a pretty remarkable achievement. And um, she's a lot of talent in a small package. She's only four foot seven, but her brand is huge. So we're very happy to have CJ Miles here today. Hi. Hi. How I'm are so you? happy to be here. I know. And you look amazing. I have to say, I felt kind of bad when you pulled up. So for those of you who don't know, until we get like a real studio, we're shooting on my ranch and you're so like, you have heels on. For you. <laughs> For you. Yeah, I know. You Usually look, I'm naked. <laughs> you look so it. fancy. And then you show up to like this ranch and it's like you guys can't see behind, I but it. I don't, we don't have like tables for like her purse. And so she showed up and she looked so fancy and I'm like, oh man, I wish I, wish I had a better welcome committee know, for you. you but, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, CJ, tell us a little bit about about your story. Let's start from the beginning. You grew up in the Philippines, right? Yes. And I came here in America, I think 2006. Mm -hmm. 2006. No, maybe. I forgot. But a yeah. long time ago. A long time ago. Before yeah. COVID. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. the only way I can tell time now is before COVID, COVID and, and after, after COVID. COVID. Yes. Yeah. So around 2006. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like where in the Philippines you grew up. Like what was your childhood like? Uh, okay. Um, how do I start this? Uh, I finished uh, computer engineering for everybody who doesn't know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know how to make like a uh, website if I like uh, programming languages, Visual Basic, Flash. That's everything. amazing. Yeah. So I finished college because my dad wants me to finish college mm -hmm. because the only way to get out of like how do you call it poorness poverty <laughs> of poverty yeah is to finish college mm -hmm. so i did it but it's not really for me mm -hmm. so it ended up i came here in america but it's a long story before that so okay so we'll tell us that story we got some time okay uh so i grew up well i didn't really grow up i'm still short <laughs> <laughs> um my mom left us my dad left us so i, I was homeless for my childhood. How old were you when that happened? Uh, maybe my dad left us when I was four, five, and then my mom left us when I was thirteen. So I was living up my classmates every day, like different places. Oh, wow. So, so I'm so sorry. Did you have okay. siblings, or was it? Just yeah, my you? sister and my brother is ten years gap, so he was a baby, so he was. With my mom that time okay but my mom told me that i can go because i'm 13 now so i can have is that like i mean is that normal at no, all no. like she's just different she's just different okay yeah, so she's, she's just like 13 mom. you can survive on your own yeah are you able to get a job at 13 no so 
Okay. So she I go just... to school every day. Right. Like I stayed with my classmates and. Wow, that must have been really hard on you. Yes, and then high school, but I finished college. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> God's yeah. So when did you? I mean, so did you start working to support yourself, like at any point before you went to college? Yeah, I think I work at uh, shit. Uh, can I say shit? Sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, uh, like a Japanese restaurant mm-hmm. because you wear like um, sexy outfits. <laughs> okay, so you're a waitress. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then. To support myself. But my dad was sending money too. But. Okay. To pay for my college. Right. But he couldn't go home. So. Okay. So he couldn't come. Did he leave the Philippines? Yeah. When I was four or five. Okay. So he left the country. Yeah. Okay. They broke up. So my dad and my mom broke up. So okay. My mom told me like, you can go now. Okay. And my sister got married. So. But I was still young so I couldn't right so your dad's sending you money to finish school so that you can go to school yeah. um and then you went and you studied computer programming yes okay uh, in Kaleo this is one <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah I finished college and I live in a dorm mm-hmm. and I work for uh, my first job is I work for a uh, hotel mm-hmm uh, Manila Diamond Hotel. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I can remember. And then after that, I worked for Dell. A lot of like people from America. It, mm-hmm. it was like the call center. Okay. Yeah, the start of call center. Okay, so I you worked in a call center. Yeah. Okay. So I worked for Dell mm-hmm. Computer as a tech support. So when you call one eight hundred number, right. oh, this is a good story. <laughs> this is how I got my name. Okay. <laughs> so when you call one eight hundred number, like. Dell, when you have a problem with computers, it goes straight to, it's right, it's always routed in India or right. Philippines because it's the cost of labor is cheaper. Yes. And then, so my boss was like, okay, you have to make an American sounding name because we, we can't say Christina, like a long name. Yeah. So I was like, right in five minutes, you have to write your American sounding name. Mm-hmm. Which is, I put Miles, because I always listen to this girl and the radio station. And she always, like, play, like, love music and, like, uh, give, like, love advices. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I like Miles. Mm-hmm. But what's my first name? And then I just, like, okay, like, you have to send it now. So I just put CJ Miles. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was a bas- uh No, what is he? Basketball player. CJ oh, Miles is a basketball player. Oh, okay. yeah, I didn't I came know that here. either. Yeah, so that was my name for three years at Dell. Uh huh. So I'm CJ Miles. So when you call, like, oh, it's CJ Miles, like one eight hundred, you know. When yeah. You call. And that's how when I went to America. Okay, so af- after working for Dell, I was like, I I wanna leave the Philippines because I only make hundred dollars a month. Wow. Yeah, like a uh, four years degree. That's crazy. Yeah. So. How much like was your rent? I live in a dorm. Like I live in a dorm with 12 girls, like bunk beds. Wow. Yeah. For eight years. Because that's where wow. I live. Yeah. So I was like, I was like sitting in front of my McDonald's. I was like, I need to like get out of here. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. But I was thinking like, okay, the easiest route is Japan. Mm-hmm. Because my cousins went to Japan and they're like, they married the Japanese guy <laughs> and they're like become rich. So mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't care if I can dance in in Japan or I don't know. And then my boss in Dell, I dated him when I was, because it's all American mm-hmm. guys. So of course they like me. <laughs> <laughs> they love Filipino girls. But I dated, he was 27, I was 24. Mm -hmm. And then I think I dated him a year or two in the Philippines and he went back to Texas Mm -hmm. because they're they're done. Mm -hmm. And then I told him I'm going to Japan and he he told me, okay, I'm going back to Texas, I'm gonna petition you. So he petitioned me, the fastest way to go to America is it's either fiance visa or spouse visa. Yes. So I got the fiancé visa. Within 90 days, I have to get married to him. Mm-hmm. But when I got there, he lives in his mom's basement. He was 27. 
And I didn't know. His sister told me, like, as soon as I got there, he got divorced. So he was, he was really married when he was dating me in the Philippines. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when I, when I got there, I don't think, I feel like he was stuck. Mm -hmm. Like, feeling stuck, like he was beating me up every day. Oh, no. Yeah, he's a black belter. Yikes. Yeah, I don't. I don't really tell the story, but because I feel like I owe him how I got to America. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I live in his mom's house. I don't want to tell the police, but his mom and his sister wrote the immigration mm -hmm. and said that, oh, my son is beating CJ. They, they couldn't handle him because he's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. So they want, so they were trying to protect you. They feel bad. Right. Within, for six months, I was like cleaning their house. Yeah. Taking care of their kids. And so their sister, like, you can leave now. I said, no, I don't want you to think that I use your son for fiancé visa or visa. Right. But they're like, no. And then the, the immigration wrote back and they gave me a visa, like a citizenship. Wow. It, I didn't know it's my rights. Wow. So they, okay, so you never married him. We, I within ninety within ninety days I got married to him. But as soon as I got there, he was like, I don't know, maybe he's like, I have, he has anxiety or something. Mm -hmm. But he always beat me up. But I kind of see saw that when we were in the Philippines, like he has a heavy hand, mm -hmm. like he chokes me like left and right, something. Like. Wow. Yeah, but it become worse when I get to Texas. Right. And then he told me like, where are you gonna go? You don't know anybody but me. And my dad only gave me hundred dollars. One way ticket and a hundred dollars. Yeah. So I don't really know anybody in America, and right. he's the only. And he always tell me like, "Where are you gonna go?" You know, I'm yeah. like the only one you know. So he goes to work every day, and I saw he he has a MySpace. Mm -hmm. That was like MySpace that yeah. time. And every day he he unplugged the computer, like I can't go online or call my parents or my sister that I'm in trouble. Yeah. But one day he forgot his MySpace is there. I'm like, what is MySpace? I know I saw like he was talking to other girls. I don't really care anymore because mm -hmm. I don't really love him anymore yeah. after he beats me up. Yeah. So I made a MySpace and I put one picture of me, like a, like a, just a simple picture. And then a lot of guys like wrote me and one photographer from San Diego. Sorry, I need to yeah, drink water. Yeah, 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 no, no. It's quite <laughs> a story. Okay, so you, you got on, you created your own MySpace account. Yes. And you have a photographer from San Diego. So he up. wrote me, um, I'm going to fly you out. It's just one picture I mm -hmm. put. Uh, I'm going to fly you out in San Diego. I, I said, okay, I'm going to pay you f uh, $500 and shoot. But I said, I don't have social security number yet. I cannot work. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was waiting for... You are waiting for it. Yeah. Right. You'd been approved to get your visa, yeah. but you were waiting for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't get a job in Texas. I wanted to, but I yeah, couldn't because I don't have social security number. Right. I didn't know it was important in America. Yeah. <laughs> and my $100 was Not gone for a anymore. long time. Yeah. yeah. And then he, I was think I didn't even think like there's bad people in America. Maybe what if he's a rapist or a yeah. killer? I didn't know that. Yeah. But it happens like God is always watching over me. Yeah. Like, it's a legit photographer. So I told him, like, hey, somebody wrote me and fly me to San Diego. And he said, go. Like, he doesn't care. Like, he wants me really to go. Huh. Yeah, because the immigration gave me already, like, a citizenship. and But I just couldn't leave. I just don't know where to go. Right. You don't I don't have money. Go, and you can't get a job. Yeah. And then as soon as the, the photographer said, I'm going to fly you out, I'm like, okay. It happens that it's he's a legit photographer, and he mm -hmm. saw he saw me like you should have your own website. Like I didn't know there's a lot of like import girls like modeling. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And then because I live in Orange, Texas, it's mm -hmm. like really like not city. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there for six. So when I got there, and he said like, "Do you have any friends here?" I'm like, "No." So he introduced me to friends in D. And one of my friends, Sharice, and they're both Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And they model too. So I, as soon as I saw them, they're like, 
like I can talk to somebody, like I can speak my own language. And then yeah. I said, oh, because um, my husband is like beating me up. And Francine was like, fuck that. And she lived in Vegas. It's like, come to Vegas and I have a job for you. Wow. So I went back to Texas and I, I packed my stuff. And then I, I told him, like, I have a modeling gig. It's like, he doesn't care. He doesn't even look look for me after that. Yeah. I mean, I guess in some way, thank God he didn't try to force you to stay. Yeah. Um, I think he just want to get rid of me. Yeah. Too. Right. <laughs> So then you left, and then you're in Vegas, and you're with your friends. Yes. As soon as I got to the airport, my friend picked me up, and then we went straight to the Rhino. Mm -hmm. Spearmint Rhino. I was I worked there for 12 years. Wow. So I, that's how I build up. A lot of guys knows me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when, when you did this modeling job with this guy in San Diego, was it a nude modeling job? Yeah. So when I lived with her, I didn't know she's, like, famous. Okay. Yeah. Her whole house is full of cameras. Like her fans is what... Before only fans. She's just a really smart girl. Mm -hmm. She's naked every day. Mm -hmm. And she's like... She has different boyfriends right. <laughs> that comes to the house. And they fuck and they have cameras. And then all her fans... She's really successful. Like half Filipino, half Chinese. So she's really smart and business-minded. Mm -hmm. So she brought me to the Rhino. And all her fans in the house, like it, her website... She does live every day too. All her fans are like, who is that little girl? <laughs> so that's how it started. And then in, at the Rhino, well, it's the best strip club. That's why I, I worked mm -hmm. there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how I started. That's, that's a crazy story. Yeah, and every day at the Rhino, I work every day because I feel like I... I lost so much money because I was like already 26 that mm -hmm. time. I was like, now I need to like work every day. Mm -hmm. So I go to work and then sleep. Go. Yeah. And then I go with her all the time. Car show, Hawaii, San Francisco, LA. We joined like, um, she, I was like her, what do you call that? She, like her, protege? Oh, yeah, yeah, protege. Yeah, she was like your, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like she was kind of teaching you. Yeah, everything. Everything about the business. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. From putting tampons. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know how to put tampons before because in the Philippines we use napkin. Yeah. So she have to like push that. <laughs> yeah. And then she, do she does a lot of like penthouse. That's how I get to the penthouse. I did penthouse. Uh, what was her TV. name? CJ Miles. No, her name. Francine D. Francine D. Okay. I think yeah. I've heard that name before. Yeah. Okay. She's like big boobs and she, I learned a lot of, a lot, everything from her. She's business minded. Like, like even napkins, like CJ, kiss this. And there's like my, my, my kiss mark. And then, okay, we're going to sell this. Yeah. She said, you don't know you have a lot of fans. I said, no, I don't know. Because it's like her world is like a lot of fans watching her every day. Yeah. Watching me every day. Yeah. Did yeah. you know that? Okay. So when you first walked into her house. Did you know that you were going to no. be live streamed all the time? No. And she's always naked. CJ, it's like, I'm not really like naked. It's like, I feel like it's like we're kids, you know, like you're right. So we're like, we walk naked all the time. And then when I got to Rhino, my first day, we went to get a, a license so you can work mm -hmm. at the Rhino. Yeah. Cause in Vegas you have to get a yeah. license to be a dancer. Yeah. And then we walk in the back. I didn't know it's a strip club. Mm -hmm. Because the back door is different. Yeah. So the manager always asked, like, the girls to uh, audition. Mm -hmm. Like, they have to get, change the clothes and wear bikinis. Mm -hmm. But I was, like, in the, just my regular cl clothes. No makeup. I look, like, 12, 16. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Forever 16. And then he said, you can start now. I was, like, start what? And so what was your first dance like? I didn't really dance. Okay, this is a good story too. <laughs> so as soon as like Francine's like, okay, she gave me a bikini and walk inside the see you, see, see you inside, bitch. <laughs> and so I was like, I walk in the back. It's like all strippers like, and then I walk in the front. I was like, no, I cannot do this. There are like a lot of guys because it's like poker time. Yeah. It was big poker. The poker players are there all the time. Mm-hmm. 
I was like, no, I can't do this because I feel like I finished college for this. This is my first job in America. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I, I'm okay with like working in McDonald's or whatever. But yeah. I, it's different mentality, you know, like, oh, stripper, like I finished school for this. Yeah. And then I saw a lot of girls, like all Filipinos, like, ah, okay. Like they're just naked, like normal. Yeah. And then a lot of guys like, hey, I want to get a dance from you. I said, it's my first night. I don't know how to dance. Yeah, every girl say that. I'm like, no, really, I don't know how to dance. I, <sighs> so he took me in the back, and I just sat there, and he was so nice. He lives here, and and then like every night, like he goes there and give me a lot of money, and I don't have to dance. I I told you it's my first night. I don't know how to dance, and then I don't have a phone. Mm -hmm. And Francine saw me like, okay, like, we have to go home now. I'm like, bye. We have to go. I'm not done, uh, done with you. Like, I paid you, like, every hour. Like, but I have to go because she's my ride. I don't know where to live. I don't know where she lives. Mm -hmm. So I have to go when she goes to work and mm -hmm. when she goes home. Wow. And then he just wait for me at the club every time. And he would just pay you? And yeah. And then he told me, like, you, sh you should be a star because everywhere we go, we, we walk in Bellagio, like where she, he plays at or at the Rio, everybody looks at me like for four, from four years old <laughs> to 104 years old. They, so he, he, I became a, like, he's like a business minded. So he's not like really like a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. He became my manager. He opened a website. He put me in a lot of billboards and magazines here in LA. So that's how I started. It seems like you kind of had a lot of like, kind of, for lack of a better term, like angels come into yes. your life. Yes, and one like, is Francine and one is my first boyfriend here. Yeah. They taught me how to like run business and he opened me a website, pay for a lot of photographers, put me in like magazines, car shows. Yeah. So when when I broke up with him, like I'm already like, people knows me already because of Francine too. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, do you think like, what does that make you... I don't know. What do you think about that? Does that make you believe in like some kind of fate or that someone's watching over you? Or do you yeah. just think you got really lucky? I think everything and hard work and all my, my is it customers at the Rhino, mm -hmm. everyone is like respect me because they know I support my whole family back home. So I just sit there every night and they like, they take care of me. I don't have to do anything. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about CJ's transition into OnlyFans and actually shooting adult content. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Are you in a couple looking for a third or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field is the alternative dating app for couples and singles. As the largest dating community of progressive humans across the globe, Field connects the curious and the open-minded. Field has built a community for awesome, ethical, like-minded people who can explore their sexuality with others free of judgment or shame. Whether you're into cuddles and long walks on the beach or shibari and BDSM, Field welcomes it all. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. The app is inclusive to all, no matter your gender or orientation. When you join, you can choose from over 20 sexual and gender identity options. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today. All right, everybody, we are back. So CJ, uh, how did you, like, okay, so then, so you're, you're dancing at the Rhino. Um, where did you go from there? You became, you started modeling, and doing like, you got a really pretty successful Instagram going, right? Yes. So, so this is my ninth Instagram. Oh, I keep geez. getting deleted. <laughs> They're always like, well, how do you have a lot of followers? Like I was supposed to have more followers, but I keep getting deleted. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my ninth Instagram. So I have to behave. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram is notorious for yeah. deleting profiles. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. My Twitter got deleted the other day. Oh, God, really? I don't know how because Twitter you can always like yeah. get naked or anything. I don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. This is. There I have was... a lot of fake profiles too. So mm -hmm. my Twitter before like a fan from UK, he has like a lot of fans on my. He made a an account for me, and I have to buy it from him because he has a lot. And then it got deleted again. 
Yeah. 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 Okay, well, let's talk about an account that hasn't been deleted, your OnlyFans. Yes. So when did you start that, and why did you start So doing before only OnlyFans, fans, I worked for a soup app. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've heard of that. It, it's based on UK. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah gotcha. it's a UK guy. Okay. So I saw Dan Bill. Dan Bilzerian and Dan Fleischman, they were, they were at the right now. Uh-huh. They're like, you have to contact this guy because he loves you. So I met him in L.A. and he owns the soup app. Mm-hmm. And, and so I started doing the soup app. It's kind of the same, mm-hmm. but we get paid like coins. But I started dating him. <laughs> I started dating him. Mm-hmm. And then, but after a year, we broke up. And then I went here in L.A. and there's a photographer, Twist. LA images. Mm-hmm. He said, he saw me at Starbucks. He said, CJ, you have to work for OnlyFans. Bill loves you. The first owner of OnlyFans is Bill. Oh, Bill Fox. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. He was following me on Soup. He was like a fan. Like, mm-hmm. And then, but I didn't know my fans because I cannot really interact on Soup app. You cannot interact with fans. Okay, gotcha. So they just watch you and buy you a like, Tip you coins, mm-hmm. something like that. It kind of sounds like a webcamming kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. but on over the phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I just like do that. So it's kind of gotcha. like Snapchat. Kind of like Snapchat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so Bill like has a crush on me. He's mm-hmm. so nice. He, I I met him at his house and then show me all the girls and guys on OnlyFans that makes money. I'm like, damn. Like, she, I was like, okay, you have to start your own. And I was like, why are you not focused? I went back to Vegas and still dancing. Like, why are you still dancing? Why are you not focused on your own, your OnlyFans? Because it's slow. Because I'm so used to, like, cash. Yeah. Like, I can see cash. Right. Like, I go to work, I make cash. Mm-hmm. And then, like, no, you have to, like, s- like um, stay. So I was like, no, I can't because I have bills. So he's, like, giving me money <laughs> while waiting for my fans. Right. And then he died. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was I was in uh Italy and then I was messaging him. He's not replying for the first time. So, yeah, I found out like he, he I went to his IG and I think yeah, he died. I was like sad. Yeah, he was a really nice man. Yeah. I know him too. So, I, he he made a note to the new owner of OnlyFans whatever CJ does cuz I always plug my website cuz I have mm-hmm. a website with cjmas.com. Mhm. What I, you cannot really plug your website on OnlyFans. Yeah, they don't like that. Yeah, yeah. but I have a note. Whatever CJ do, leave her alone. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's a note. That's crazy. Yeah. So, okay, so you weren't shooting adult content before OnlyFans, yeah. right? Because I was looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> you like, uh, silly girl. <laughs> I, I had a lot of like, like offers, like, uh, you know, to be porn star mm-hmm. during I was... And dancing because I met all the adult yeah, industry. Of course. Yeah, I mm-hmm. go to AVN all the time, and mm-hmm. I get a lot of offers. But I never because I wanna like I wanna look for love. I wanna get married, <laughs> like. And then yeah, and then on OnlyFans, uh, I quit dancing because I was dancing for twelve years. Mm-hmm. So I moved to Miami, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, I'm not gonna dance anymore. I'm just gonna focus on OnlyFans. So I focus on OnlyFans. Um, I didn't know anybody in in Miami when I moved there. I just I was just done. I was mm-hmm. done with with Rhino. Mm-hmm. But that was Rhino was my home. Yeah, it's like a one roof of cash. I just go there and then yeah, make yeah. a lot of money. I mean, that sounds like the place that really like kind of cha- you know changed your life for you in terms of your income. Yeah. you could finally support yeah. yourself and going supported from, my whole family too. Yeah, going from a place where you were making a hundred dollars a yes. month. Yes. To, yeah, making no, probably more. that in five minutes. Yes. You know, I mean, exactly. like, big difference. Yeah. So I just focus on OnlyFans every day. And now, like, I have a lot of assistance that helps me because it's after COVID, yeah, it I became big. Yeah. yeah. But Can't for see. other girls, it's hard for them because they don't have social media. They just mm-hmm. focus on dancing or mm-hmm. they're more private mm-hmm. life. I or like they have parents, you know, like or relatives. Mm-hmm. I don't really care yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. My my dad doesn't really ask. I'm sure they all know. Yeah. They just don't look. And I don't really care what people say. 
right. me. I think that's the difference between me and a lot of girls. They really care about what people think about mm-hmm. them. But for me, like, I support my whole family, my my brother, sister, and all my nephews and niece finish college because of what yeah. I do. Do you think that the fact that you don't really care about what other people think and that you can deal with the stigma better is because you come from such a hard childhood and like you know yeah. what poverty is and you yeah. know what it's like to have nothing? Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't want to go back being homeless again. Right. Yeah. And I mean, and you created all of this yourself. Yeah. I mean, you are a creator. Like, you know, people can argue back and forth about like what you create, you know, and whether or not that's yeah. worthwhile or not. But the truth is, is that, you know, you you create, I mean, you create and you are your own boss, you know? I mean, there's this, so what would you say to people who, you know, look at someone like you and think she's got to have some pimp behind her who's making her do this. She (laughs) would be doing something else if she could, like she's deeply unhappy, like inside, like I'm always happy. So yeah. What would you say to people I think I'm always grateful because of my past Mm -hmm. too. And I think for other girls that, oh, I want to be like you, but I, t- I show them the money that I make because every time I see beautiful girls, like, I was like, damn, you're losing a lot of money by the <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I, I don't get jealous. Like, I want them to make money and not, yeah. and not be um, taken advantage of men, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But, so, and, like, you don't need really sugar. Da- sugar daddy is just one when you can have the whole world. You know, the whole world giving yeah. you a lot of money. You don't need, uh, you don't need guy, one, one guy, guy that controls your life. And then what if he's gone and then you're like done? Well, you already had that. Yeah. You experienced that when yeah. you first moved here. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure you exactly. don't ever want to get back in that same situation. Mm-hmm. And you want to have, you know, power and yeah. control over your and future. And freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Men always control you. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. Um, so what is it about OnlyFans that was different than the other things? Like, like what what are your fans like? Because on OnlyFans, you can now talk to them. Yeah, I think before I was like, always like worry, oh, I need to make content. I need to make content. What guys want, some guys are boy, girl, 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 solo. But really OnlyFans is made because they're your fans. You need to talk to engagement. Mm-hmm. They want to talk. Because they can go to porn, it's for free. Mm-hmm. But... Only f- they join OnlyFans to know to get to know you better. Mm-hmm. So my ex before he was he has on OnlyFans too, and we're like doing. So we, he has a camera, and I have a camera. <laughs> so that's how what we do. But I was like, oh, I, my. F- it's not always about content. Like, oh, we have to make content because this. No, it's not. OnlyFans is for fans. You engage with them and talk mm-hmm. to them. They they want to know you better, mm-hmm. not just like. And I don't really talk because I'm shy with my my accent Mm -hmm. I'm not really good at explaining myself but yeah so So, I now I talk to my fans all the time when I can mm -hmm. that's why I have like seven phones (laughs) it's hard I did notice you had a couple of phones when you came in here it's yeah so um I don't have a personal life it's all like (laughs) well that's my life yeah yeah I think I love what I'm do I do Mm mm-hmm so it's it's easy for me because some girls they like they see the money but they didn't know it's a lot of work but for me it's not work because I love being naked it's easy for me Mm -hmm. yeah what's your favorite thing about being a creator ah travel travel and you can work everywhere like at home you can be in Maldives (laughs) and then just it's easy yeah no it's great it's It's just no nine to five job mm -hmm. you only need wi-fi Mm mm-hmm and then you meet a lot of good people all over the world. Like I went to Australia and they I they flew me out just because of club opening. And then I saw them like, oh, CJ, like, how do you guys know me? <laughs> You're all over the internet. I'm like, I didn't know I did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's crazy to see like your reach, right? Yeah. So if a fan sees you in public, do they ever, do you ever get approached in public? Everyone is so nice to me. Yeah. So I love them. Like most of the couples, I went to Dubai. It's like couples, they, like it's different. Mm-hmm. And they really love me. And especially the wife, they're like, oh my God, your energy is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So. You said that you didn't want to do porn at first because you were looking for love. 
you're doing porn <laughs> now. Do you think, are you still looking? Like, do you think it's, it's possible with what you do? Do you have a hard time dating? So I just opened like a, a dating app. Like a, I joined a one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because my friends like, you should, I just broke up. I was in a long time relationship. Mm -hmm. But I, I get a lot of guys still messaging me. I just don't have time. Yeah. Because if I go on a date every day, I will get fat. <laughs> Imagine every night I go out on a yeah. date. I will, for me, it's like, now it's different. Do you want to make content with me? Because <laughs> I need boy girl. It's different now. So guys are like, okay, I'll make content with you. Wow. The date is different now. Like, okay, can I suck your dick in the first date? <laughs> Sign this. <laughs> Sign your life away. I mean, the, it's different the, now. Yeah. Because I don't want to waste my time like on a, going on a date. I can buy myself a dinner. Yeah. I can buy you a dinner just like. What are you looking for in a guy? Uh, successful as I am. Mm -hmm. So somebody who's driven, who's ambitious. Yeah. Because I supported a lot of guys already. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I don't need that. Yeah. So somebody who's successful on their own. Yeah. Um, Not and, jealous because of what I do right supportive and yeah yeah that's it's tough right it's tough to re meet the right but it can have I met my husband on a dating app so which one uh tinder oh I can't then tinder because every one picture like CJ Mouse that's unfair yeah so now I went to hinge but there's a lot of guys but I never reply because I don't have time yeah <laughs> yeah there's plenty of time to date later yeah Suck now. <laughs> <laughs> Date later. <laughs> um, I love money more, I guess. No, focus. Well, I mean, to, yeah. I mean, though, I think somebody from your... I think you should give yourself a little bit more credit. Yes, money. But I think for you, it, it, it might be more like freedom, you know, like self-independence. I mean, yeah. I think it's... You know, people always say like, oh, money doesn't matter. But I think to somebody who comes from a place where they had no money, yeah. like money I think matters. It, yeah. I appreciate everything, like bottle of water. We yeah. don't have that in the Philippines, like clean water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gratitude is everything. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so speaking of men, uh, what is one piece of sex advice that you would give to men? Like what is one thing when you're with a guy, what is one thing that guys get wrong a lot? I think they flex so much. <laughs> 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 On camera, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. From for me, they need to eat, eat good pussy. <laughs> okay, so take their time with you. Yeah. Like, do you find that they just kind of like for me and for a lot of other girls that I've spoken to, um, the feedback that I hear a lot is that like men don't take their time trying to get a woman turned on. They're like, oh, I'll just eat your pussy like really fast, and then you're gonna be super wet, and then we're gonna have sex right away, right? Because guys yeah, can get yeah into it really fast whereas women can take longer is that kind of what you're saying well if you're getting paid it's better to like be fast no well yeah <laughs> yes okay chop, let's, chop. Pretend, let's pretend I love. Content for your only fans <laughs> let's pretend you're like with a man that you you really are into and you're not shooting content you're not okay. on the clock not on the clock what kind of advice would you give to men like men who really want to learn how to please a woman like what do you like be sweet and gentle. Okay. Some some guys try to try to like pull my hair or choke me. Like my hair has an extension. <laughs> you can come anywhere, but my eyelashes because my. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so like the basics. So don't yeah. pull your hair. Don't come in your eyelashes. Be sweet and gentle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what about penis size? Is that something that's important to you? Yeah. Like, yeah. do you like big or small or does not matter? Or? If he's rich, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> Girl, you know, I cannot say that you are not fucking honest. <laughs> right? No, I am honest. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. So penis size doesn't really matter to you. It does. It does. It has to be big, no? I don't know. Or else I wouldn't feel it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because how, it, so what's big to you then? Maybe like this. No, that's too much. Like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, if it's small, I'm like, okay. Like, 
And then you're going to get married to him. Like, fuck that. You're going to end up cheating, no? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends on what's important to you. So if you like a big dick, then good you got to have a big good dick. Good sex and money. Like, you can take me to vacation because I don't want to pay for his. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of like random Q and a questions. Mm -hmm. What is your greatest fear? To be broke. Mm, Yeah. And to like, um, get old by myself. Okay. To be alone. Okay. Yeah. But I'm really independent. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, cause I grew up without my mom. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, I think all of us, it makes sense that you would still want to find somebody to grow old with. That's not, you can be independent and still want that. Because I don't want to have cats and dogs. I can't. <laughs> Do you want to have a family? I was supposed to, <laughs> but we broke up. <laughs> yeah. But you Maybe not. I don't know. Well, I have a lot of nephews and nieces, so. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of depends on where life takes you. Yeah. If I don't get fat, yeah, I will have a baby. I feel like you're you're like a petite person. I don't think you're going to get fat. I don't I wouldn't worry about Surgery. that. Surgery. I was re- well, I mean, yeah, that's always an option. No, but okay, I I asked and knows a lot of guys that after having a baby, they always say like cuz I work in a strip club, so I feel like I was like a psychologist. Like right, a lot right. of men, like, they go there like, oh, I cannot fuck my wife or my girlfriend because she's the mother of my child. Fuck that. No. That's really I, weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. what they always say. I'm like, I don't want to be that. I want to be the the stripper whore that you go to. <laughs> Not, that, that you have married. No, I think, I, too, because like, my sister, like, uh, she has a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you become a mom, mm-hmm. that's your more... Like your you, identity, or you you don't want to have sex anymore. You just care about your kids. Yeah, I okay. mean, I think. Well, I mean, I have a kid, so I can tell you from personal experience. I think your priorities change. Yeah, for sure. Your like your body change, and then you just don't care more about the husband later on. Just the kids more. I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. I think there's okay. probably a lot of women who can tell you that that's not true, who okay. have had kids and, like, still very much enjoy sex and still very much, like, um, you know, are sexy and still... Like, you can have it all. I think society true. does tell us. I think society okay. tells women that once you have a child and it's once you're a mother, you have no sexual value. Or you, have no, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like the un, that unfair kind of chauvinistic view of, like, Either you're a sex object or you're a mother. Like, you can't be both. I think you can be both. Okay. I think you can be all of those things. Okay. I think you can be whatever you want to be. True. Sure. You can be a mom. A and slut. you can be sexy. <laughs> you can be a slutty mom. Exactly. What's wrong with that? <laughs> if I have, like, another CJ Miles, I'm like, go to work. <laughs> Let's go OnlyFans together. <laughs> Suck dick together. Just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, you can be, I mean, and this is the world that we live in now. Like you as a woman can dictate your future. (laughs) Yeah. Men, yeah. Women now are different. Yeah. I think you, I think you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. I mean, haven't you proved that already? Look at where you came from. (laughs) Exactly. So. Well, CJ, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. It's your story. It's a really incredible story. Well, this is the first time I told everything because every time I get like interviewed podcasts, I always like cut short because I don't want to tell everything. No, I understand. So they're like, why you don't, why you skip like your childhood, your, your hardship? Because I don't want people to pity me, you know, but. I don't know. I don't think that anybody, I don't think anybody's going to see this podcast and pity you. And I think if anything, one thing that I have noticed when I have people come on and they talk about their hardships what they get more is the feedback of people who relate to them. Yeah. Who are like, oh my gosh, I've been through the same thing. Yeah. Like, you know, that commonality. Yeah. Because we all as human beings struggle. Yeah. We all have hardships. And I think when people come out and talk about it openly and then show that you can overcome that. Yeah. And you can be something bigger and you can make something yeah. of yourself. I think that's really inspiring for a lot of people. Yeah. And also, because my Instagram or it's 97% men. Mm-hmm. 
women and uh, girls cannot really relate. She, they think they see me in Dubai, Maldives. Oh, I have a sugar daddy. No. Mm-hmm. So I just want to like tell the girls that you can do it by yourself. Yeah. What is one piece of advice that maybe you would give to somebody who is in your situation? If there's someone who's out there who's struggling and they want to get into sex work and they want to like achieve something. I think the biggest fear for like younger, especially younger women, they think so much about what people will say. I think that's the difference between me and other girls that I become successful because I never really care what people say about me. Yeah. So you cannot or be controlled by society or what. Oh, I cannot do that because my audience is like this. Okay, but I make more. So right. what do you what do you want? You, you only have few years to look good. Yeah. Well, I have forever. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's either do it now. I think you will find love anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I mean, look, we, we never know what the future is going to bring. So yeah. I think just keep doing what feels right for yeah. you. And then and like, just be good to and everybody. it seems to me that you've manifested a lot of really amazing things to happen to you in your life. So there's no reason that you can't like manifest a great love into your life as well. True. I think I was be, I've been manifesting about good life. I forgot to manifest about husband. So now, like I I write the like uh, yeah that I am manifesting a husband who's not gonna control me and take care of me forever. And then I put to like maybe I have a kid. <laughs> you know what? I mean, make your vision board. I think yeah, I think I there's have. a there's a lot in that law of attraction. I think you manifest into your life like what you put out there. So exactly every day. Awesome. Well, I I feel like you're going to do all right. Thank you. I think you're going to get what you want in life. Inshallah. (laughs) God's will. Can you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Uh, Instagram is Miss CJ Miles. M-I-S-S CJ Miles. My website is MissCJMiles.com and then OnlyFans.com slash CJ Miles. Perfect. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch interviews like this live, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Also, follow me on TikTok. I oh, am I on TikTok. I am posting uh, short little clips from this podcast. Um, I'm at Holly Randall Unfiltered on TikTok. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Yay! Are you in a couple looking for a third? Or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field values sex positivity and encourages you to share your desires and interests directly to your profile. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today.